Hello, everybody, and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. I wanted to show you a couple of quick tips and tricks as it relates to Vectric, Aspire, and importing and organizing your 3D models. Let's hop right in. As you can see, I've got a copy of Vectrix Aspire open. And let's go to create a new file. And I'll make it 36 by 36, 3 quarters of an inch thick. Z0 is on the table or on the bottom of the stock. XY datum lower left. We'll work in inches. Use a very high modeling resolution. Canadian maple will be the wood. And we'll click OK. And that brings us to the normal palette we're all used to working with in our drawing tab. Now, there are two basic types of models that you will want to use with Aspire. One is a dot 3D clip which is a native modeling file extension to Vectric. And when you go to VectorArt3D.com and you download one of those models, it comes in as a .3D clip file. Then there are places that you can go and purchase .stl files. Both are 3D models, but they have different file extensions. So let me give you an example. So if we take a look here at this particular file in my computer, you can see that I have a whole bunch of animals. And the file extensions here on these particular models are Vectrec 3D clip files. And so if I want to bring one of these, say this seahorse, I want to bring this seahorse into my Aspire session, I can grab it and merely drag it and it's there and if I go to my 3d view it's there if I come to my modeling tab I have level one seahorse and now I can come over do my tool paths machine this part enlarge it make it smaller whatever I want to do just by dragging the model in from your file explorer uh, from within Windows. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that out. We won't save the changes. And we'll cr do all the same things, 36, 36, etc. Only this time, I've got some STLs. And if I come here, these are a bunch of STLs that I have. And here's a Bass STL. And when I take this .stl file and I try to drag that in, it doesn't let me. You can see the little circle with the line through it saying, nope, can't do it. And that's because a .stl is not a native file type file extension for Vectric. So how do we get that one in there? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you this one first. We come up here to our import component or 3D model, and it opens up a file explorer in Windows. I don't know what they call it in the Mac. Um, and so same STLs that I have here, and let's bring in this skull, skull 3, and here we go. And it comes in with some different options. And you can write here your interactive rotation, our view, we're twiddling, I think they call it uh, X, Y, and Z. If you need to move the model, X, Y, and Z, you can move just the model, X, Y, Z, as you can see there. We're moving just the model from within the zero plane. We can move just X. We can move just Y and we can move just Z up and down. Okay, so what, right? So let's go ahead and we'll get this set back to how we brought it in. And here, whoever designed this model when they built it, 
they built it in some kind of a program and they produced it at a scale of 11.6759 inches thick in Z, 236 inches in X, and 299 inches in Y. And people do that. They do the make the model so big like that. So if you have to resize this down, you can do it and not lose any of its resolution. And so, for example, if I want to set this at three quarters of an inch, I can do that and click apply. And now my model has adjusted to three quarters of an inch, 15 in X, 19 in Y. This red box represents our 36 by 36 uh, material block that we set up when we did our original setup. And then if we look here, our zero plane position in model, but as I slide this up and down, the model moves up and down in the Z plane. I personally always bring it to the bottom and I uncheck the discard data below zero plane. I want to keep all of that data and I bring the whole model in and I click OK. And there's the model. The model comes in into our 36 by 36. And if you double click on it, it's three quarters of an inch thick, just like we stated. And now just like with that other uh, model that we, we dragged and dropped into Aspire, we can now come over and create our tool paths as it relates to this model. Now, because this is more of a tutorial on how to get the models in, I'm not going to spend any time and, you know, I recognize that the material block is probably too big and there's a couple of modifications we will have to do with this model before we can machine it. But I wanted to show you how to at least get it into Aspire. Okay, so uh, let me show you another thing. From within Aspire, they have added a new tab, and let me just go ahead and close this. And let's go ahead and create the new file again. Same sizes, same everything. We have a new tab down here now called Clip Art. And when you clip on that, or excuse me, click on that, you have your library browser and you have your local files. On the local file section, if you come to a place that has anything related to Vectrex, so for example, if I come in here into this particular part here, into my CNC project folders file, if I have anything that is Vectrex related, it's going to show up here. Anything that I've ever done any of the models that I might have, they're all here. And if you see a model here, it probably is a, a 3D clip file, and you can just grab it and drag it on. If you have some, for example, this folding storage box, if you have some uh, vectors that you were working on, you can bring those in and drag them and drop them. And just like that, uh, you've got your vectors or your model drug into your project. And you can, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Preview the stuff uh, here before you drag it in. Now, having said that, if I come to the folder that has the STLs in it, you can't see anything. There's nothing showing up here, right? You can't drag and drop. There's the skull. We can't, we can't drag and drop any of that. It's not letting us do it. It just thinks we want to be dragging these lines over, right? We'll get rid of all that. And so, um, a neat way to organize your models is, is if you take all of your Vectrec related or your native .3D clip files and you put them into a folder, 
you can come to your library browser and you can add a folder. I can navigate to where my .3D clip files are and I can add that folder now to my library. And so when I click on a specific category, if there are models from within the folder, they will populate down here, allow me to view them, and allow me to simply drag and drop into my work environment. That's pretty cool, right? You have to know where the stuff is on your computer in order for you to be able to set this up. And you have to know what the file extensions are. Are they .3D clips or are they .stls? And so let's close this. Just to recap, know your file explorer and know where your files are located. If you have an STL, you're going to have to use the import function. If you have a .3D clip, you can simply drag and drop. And then, of course, as I showed you, from within Vectrec, they now have the clip art tab that allows you to set up and manage your own 3D model library from right inside of Aspire that makes the workflow much, much easier. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial on importing 3D models into Vectrec, Vectrec Aspire. I really appreciate everybody for watching the channel and the feedback and the the comments that everybody makes. It's really a pleasure to help folks out. If there's ever anything that I can do, please don't hesitate to email me. And again, thank you, thank you very much for being a part of my YouTube channel. This is Work Against the Grain, and my name is Jeff.